So, my hoodie has got more cat and dog hair on it than I even know. I'm surprised there's any hair at all on my dog. We just got back from a trip, and it's probably been a while since I've actually put up a video, but uh, for those of you that have watched the other channel, uh, our little travel and vlog channel that we have for Mary and I, there are some travel videos coming out, and I do recommend possibly you going to see those because they kind of tie in a little bit with this video in regards to the fact that all that footage on those videos from the, I think there's five videos of our trip, plus we have videos of like all the different rides that we were on at Disney. So like full like POV rides. So you can kind of get an idea again how the Insta360 Ace Pro kind of functions. Since I had the opportunity to take it on that trip and yes, I, I got I got hurt. That's why I've been a little lax on videos because I've only just recently been able to make it from there, which is the couch to here, number one. And uh, I'm, recovery recovery is important right anyways let's let's talk about the ace pro on the trip and what i thought of it so i ended up bringing two cameras outside of my phone of course you know we always travel with a phone uh, so i brought the ace pro right here this is my setup and i'll talk about this in a second and i brought the insta 360 uh x3 and I'll, and I'll talk about that one too. The Insta360 Ace Pro, of course, is what I filmed. I would say 70, maybe even 80% of the whole video with. There have been some videos out there that talk about, you know, vlogging and focus. I didn't really notice any issue at all. Uh, again, you guys can go over to the other channel and I'll be putting clips up here as well. Um, but I did have this mounted. Uh, I actually had it mounted on like a Sony vlogging stick just because that's what I had. Uh, and being able to get this like out that kind of far, just that extra little bit of distance, you know, and, and angle this back. Again, it could have nothing to do with this stick and have everything to do with how long my arms are. I don't know, but I had no issues. Uh, as far as I can tell, watching back the video, I, you know, unless you're maybe pixel peeping and you're like, oh, it's not quite in focus, it's fine. And for anybody that are watching these kind of videos, let's be honest, I'm, I'm not putting out a $30 million cinema video movie. I'm trying to just capture memories and capture my life and, and capture the trip. And you know what? As a vlogging camera, I thought it I thought it did very well. One of the nice things that I actually found with this, number one is the, yeah, the flip up screen, very cool. I found it really useful, especially if there were scenarios where I was talking and you know I wanted my wife to be in the shot with me or I wanted my daughter to be in the shot with me. Uh, you know, when you have it on a wide angle without the front screen, yeah, you can kind of guess a little bit as to where it should be to be able to capture both of you, but flipping up that screen, that's that's all right. That's super helpful. Now you will notice, you guys should be able to see that, that I actually have the mic adapter, which again, is kind of important, important. And I have, I've had this mic for like ever. This is a ceremonic, this is a ceremonic little, it's a little mic, but it has a little wind, wind muff. Uh, and because I didn't have a cage or anything for this when I went away, this plugs straight into the mic adapter, which means I could be talking like this and have the mic pointed toward me. And if I spun it around, all I had to do was actually just spin the mic backwards to, to do that. And if I was talking kind of with myself and let's say my daughter, and we were both kind of communicating between each other, a lot of times I would just take the mic and I would just kind of spin it out like this. So it had a better chance of just catching kind of everything at least it got some side sound now the one thing to to realize is because of how wide the ace pro shoots and i think this is really like all action cams not just the ace pro if i were to have tilted this like all the way in like this uh it's wide enough that it would catch a little bit of the fuzz so i tried to always remember to have it out just a little bit so it kind of pointed off to an angle same thing back here not not important because there's no camera but I would just kind of keep it there so that the width didn't catch that. There were a few times I did notice that I forgot to do that. And because of that, I had to crop in the shot a little bit. 
but we are dealing with 4K and 4K is good. I shot 4K 30 and it was it was good. The reason I shot 4K 30, I was thinking about doing 4K 30 and 4K or 4K 60, but in pure video, uh, I believe you can only shoot in 4K 30. That's kind of a maximum, so I wanted to be able to shoot in pure video at night. What I ended up shooting a lot of, and these are the two modes that I shot primarily with the Ace Pro, was I did shoot in, of course, pure video. And again, it was pure video 4K 30. And I shot in 4K 30 4x3. And you may be wondering why I shot 4x3. And I actually, 4x3 is one of my favorite aspect ratios to shoot in because it gives you a little bit of forgiveness. Now, I was using, you actually see I have the magnetic mount on here. And I had a magnetic mount on, a, I have a Telesin neck band. And I had another magnetic mount. So I could easily pop this off and pop it on here and pop it off and pop it on here. Uh, so whenever I was just walking around doing whatever, uh, I would just put it, I would put it on this little neck or chest mount, whatever you want to call it. And having that four by three, so being able to have that extra height and that extra bottom allowed me that error of forgiveness. So that if the camera for whatever reason was pointing up a little bit too high or was pointing down a little bit too much, I could actually crop that 16 by nine inside it and just kind of shift it up or down. So whenever I had it on here and I was not in pure video mode, I was always shooting in four by three. Primarily, I shot in, in or with active HDR on. And I think that's completely personal preference because I do find it's hard to figure out when it should be used and when it shouldn't be used. I had it on the whole time and my hope was that I could use the footage that I got from this to kind of get an idea of when I liked using that active HDR and when I didn't like that active HDR. Now again, the bonus is with one of the recent updates of the Ace Pro is that they do allow you to turn that off because previous to that, anytime you shot in 4K 30 or, or slower, it turned on and there was no way for you and I to turn that off. If we went up to 4K 60, it automatically disabled. Uh, there will be further testing of those two modes because I do want to figure out before I do a lot more moto vlogging this year, whether I like to have the active HDR on or if I don't. Now, my thought is I'm going to probably start shooting more in 4K 60 for moto vlog stuff. And because of that, I don't think I will shoot with active HDR because one of the things I did notice, and you guys will see this here, here's just a shot with active HDR on the retention of colors is fantastic. It really is, but it definitely does have an HDR look and feel to it. There were times where I did some roller coasters that I knew would be going, you know, in the dark and then out into bright light and in the dark and out into bright light. And in those instances, I would shoot in pure video. Now, pure video, of course, doesn't shoot in an active HDR. Uh, it just does some uh, AI noise reduction to the footage. But that footage, in my opinion, even when it goes outside, was better. It just, it just didn't have that HDR look to it. But again, it's per it's so much personal preference, right? And and again, it, I do find it's hard to figure out when that would be a feature that you'd be like, no, this is a this is a good time for for me to use it. So I think that's only going to come over time as you get acquainted with the camera, you'll be able to figure out when maybe that is useful. I I've turned it off now, but I do think for a lot of people, you you may actually really like the active HDR, but personal preference. Uh, sound wise was good for the most part. I use this external mic, like I said, uh, when you do have the external mic plugged in, you do have the option to go into the external mic settings to play around with the gain. So you can set it at zero plus six plus 12 or minus six minus 12. Uh, I had actually mine because I knew this mic was good in regards to being a pickup sound, but it also wasn't a loud mic to start with. So I actually had it set at plus six in there, which worked really well. But I have a feeling 
that when I'm doing motor vlogging, again, it's going to come up in a test, further tests that'll come soon because the riding season is, is slowly approaching. I'm going to test it because I do think I may have to go to minus six, but I love the fact that you have that ability. Battery wise, one battery. I shot the whole day with one battery. Now, I didn't shoot a ton, like I'm not shooting hours and hours and hours of footage, but you know, going to somewhere like Disney, where I'm vlogging and recording rides and doing like that, I did have a battery with me in a backpack, but I never used it. Yeah, it, it lasted It lasted all day. I do think that I was probably close a couple days to running out the battery, but I never got it down to like 10 or 20 percent so pretty pretty pleased with that you know i don't i don't really know what else to say about this camera uh it's a great it's a great action camera and i have a lot of action cameras you know from uh, a gopro hero 11 gopro hero 7 i have the insta 360 x3 the x2 the x1 i have the r the rs and as far as an action camera where it's dedicated as an action camera. I still think this is my favorite. I do have to do a bit more fine tuning and I think fine tuning really comes down to what you're shooting. So fine tuning in settings in regards to vlogging may be very different than fine tuning the settings in regards to motor vlogging. You know what I mean? I think I kind of know what I like in just day-to-day -day vlogging. I'm, I'm not finicky. It's it, whatever. It's fine. But I do want to do some tests within the next hopefully month or so, as long as it doesn't snow again. And when I get the bike out to be able to see what kind of settings I want for this in regards to, to that. Am I happy with it? Super happy with it. Super, super, super happy with it. Battery life was great. If I did have to charge it, it does charge very fast. The, the mic adapter is actually kind of cool too because and it is something that you kind of have to watch because as you'll notice here, I'll just take it out. Um, this, it clicks in, right? It clicks in like this, but you have to make sure that you hear that click in the bottom. So there's a little right there. Because uh, there's a couple times that I was playing with this because it snaps on there to really give it a good seal. But I had thrown this in my backpack and taken it out and what happened is it, it, it popped i don't even know how it popped maybe like that so it was sitting kind of on an angle it was still there so this was latched in but it just needed to just get it there it is an extra little push on the inside so you just want to make sure of that but that's any kind of mic adapter you just you just want to be sure the magnetic uh, mounts work really good if you are like me where you're really switching from you know mount one to mount two make sure you have two of them so that you have that ability to really move back and forth and if you are someone that is going to be shooting more than an hour or two hours at a time, extra battery pack or an extra battery. Other than that, you know what? It's a great little camera. And shooting, of course, shooting at night with pure video, I was able to get some ride shots that I definitely would not have been able to get with my older action games. Plus, if you really want to play around a little bit more, there is a pure video stabilization mode that brings up the stabilization even more. I was just using this, the normal, but if you wanted to bring it up a bit more, it actually increases a bit of the uh, sharpening so that the algorithm in the back, the AI can see the edges on the subjects a bit better and help with stabilization. I may play with that again in the future. So this is a final review, sorta, There'll be more videos in regards to the Ace Pro, but for now, definitely my favorite action camera without question. Yeah, it's a win. All right, guys, uh, Insta360 Ace Pro. Uh, we will be talking a little bit about this fella coming up shortly. This is my X3. Again, I did use that, I don't know, 20, 30% of the shots whenever I was outdoors. It's definitely not a low light camera. And if you are buying it for low light, it's not the right camera, go with the Ace Pro. But if you want a all-rounded kind of camera, it, 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 it impressed me, especially from someone that has used the uh, One, the One, the One X, the X2, and the X3. So, all right, guys, that video is coming up shortly, and uh, 
we'll see you guys later if you are interested i'll put links down below to the insta 360 gear because it's it's, it's slick i like it i'm out later